Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Church of the Will. I am Dr. Kia Moore, the pastor of the Church of the Will, based here in Memphis, Tennessee. But we have members all over the world, and I'm so excited to be with you. This is our Summer Breeze series, so I'm not sure uh, how many people will be logging in this morning. But as a leadership team, we decided to do something different for you guys. We knew that the world was opening up, uh, that y'all was going to be out and about. And we decided that if we move service up, you could watch it while you got dressed for brunch. Um, and if we shorten service, it would be done in time for you to go and enjoy the world. We understand that God has kept us through this pandemic. We are grateful for those of you that have remained faithful during the pandemic. But we also recognize that you want to see people that you have not seen before. And God is not a God that would say, you know what? You know, you got to be here at this time. God meets us where we are. That's the whole premise of the, the scripture that our church was founded on. We're founded on John 4, right? And John 4 is uh, the, 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 <laughs> the best example of that we know of, of Jesus meeting somebody where they were. And so we do that at the Church of the Well. So if that means shifting service a little bit more, me getting up early to produce service, then we'll do that uh, so that we can make sure that you guys live abundant lives, right? That means that you can see your family on Sunday, you can go to brunch with your friends, but you got your word in first. And so if we make this commitment to you, right, to raise service and to shorten service times, then we expect you guys to make this commitment to us to be on time and to participate in worship um, digitally um, and also financially, right, for you to give. But we are um, concluding um, our series, uh, Ask the Pastor, but we're actually not answering the question today. Um, I was getting ready to do uh, a question and God was like, no, I, I need you to, to share with them what I gave you. God gave me a prophetic word, um, maybe Tuesday. And, uh, I sat on it. I was going to go live and talk about it. And I forgot. And around three o'clock this morning, God was like, no, I need you to share that today. And so that's what we're going to do. But if you're just tuning in, we're super early now because we're in our summer breeze series. I should put, let me put that graphic up so you can see it. Thanks for God. Oh, it's huge. My God, I didn't know it was going to be that big. Uh, I'm playing with uh, the software and it was like way too big. Um, but this is our graphic. Um, our Summer Breeze series starts today. It's going to run for 90 days. It's going to run for 90 days uh, from now until the last day of summer or that last Sunday. And so um, it's in September. So and then we're going to move into the building. Um, so basically what we're doing is we're sh sh shortening service. It'll be an hour or less prayerfully. We're going to test it out today. Um, we moved it up to 1030 so that by the time we get done at 1130, you can be walking out the door to go to brunch. We recognize you survived the pandemic. You want to be with your family. We get that, but we want to make sure that you make time for God too as well. Um, we're going to do that through, uh, the, the second to last Sunday of September. And then what we'll do at that point is begin phasing in reopening worship. The idea is we get through this summer, we see what the Delta variant is going to do. It's very dangerous. It's more contagious than any other variant we've had. They have fleeting transmission, which means with the Delta variant, which is another version of the coronavirus, uh, with the Delta variant, you can walk past somebody and be infected, right? It's, it's very, very contagious. It's impacting people under 20, particularly children, the numbers of children in hospitals in countries where... A Delta variant is increasing before hours because it, it was there before it was in America. They're seeing numbers of children in hospitals re increasing, which we have not seen globally. Um, and so it is a very dangerous variant. So we want to get through this summer, see uh, what the variant is going to do. And then in September, with the end of September, after children are able to be vaccinated as well, we'll reopen. And then we hope to climax during anniversary weekend, which is that next to last weekend in October. We'll be celebrating October 24th. Uh, we are not celebrating anniversary on Halloween. Amen. Our anniversary is October 28th. We, we, we ain't celebrating anniversary on Halloween. Uh, so we'll celebrate anniversary on October 24th. And so from September 20th, I think, to October 24th, we'll begin to reopen the church. And come in by then most of y'all should be vaccinated and if you're not vaccinated we'll work something out for you too i'm thinking that we'll be fine i'm um, having everybody in the building by then but we're in summer breeze now we are in summer breeze now so service will be from 10 30 to 11 30 for the next 90 days uh y'all gotta hold me to it sometimes i get long-winded but what we decided to do was no welcomes so nobody else will be doing welcome anymore it'll just be me saying hello we'll do one song we'll do two points giving offering and we out of here 
Um, and I believe God will move. You know what I mean? I, I believe that God will move. And so we're going to go ahead and get into service. There won't be two points today. God gave me a prophetic word, so it'll probably be a little bit shorter than I anticipated. But go ahead and start sending out those mass text messages. Oh, it just came out. Um, in your group meetings, text your small group leaders and your friends. Let them know that we are early. Share it on Facebook. Put it in your stories to let people know that we're early and we're going to end early. So don't show up late, babe, because the word will be over. Amen. Let's get into some worship really quickly. And I'll be right back with this word that God gave me that I believe is going to guide us for the next uh, 90 days specifically. Just what he said. Give up on you. He's able. 
Everybody. My name is Dr. Kia Moore. I'm the proud pastor of the Church of the World based here in Memphis, Tennessee. And we are in our Summer Breeze series, which means that service is truncated. It's going to only be about an hour long, maybe less than that today. Uh, we might hit 45 minutes. Um, there's no welcome, uh, no announcements, just uh, me saying hello. Uh, one worship song, uh, two points in the sermon, and then we do our offering, and our um, we open the doors of the church, and then we're out of here. We did that because we are we're intuitive. We recognize that the world is opening back up. You guys, for the most part, have been stuck inside. You haven't been able to see your friends and family. You want to travel on the weekends because you haven't been able to see people for an entire year. And we're grateful that you were so faithful in your giving and in your attendance during the pandemic. And we recognize now that we can pivot so that you uh, can see the people you couldn't see, hug the people you couldn't hug, travel, see beaches, do whatever it is that God has allowed you to survive this pandemic to be able to do. But we want to make sure that we make it possible for you to remain faithful um, in your digital worship commitment, but also in your giving. And so we move service up. That means pastor got to get up early because I produce service by myself. That means the power team got to get up early because they're praying. That means the directors got to get up early because if I run into an issue, they got to fix stuff. So they were editing video this morning while I took care of something for a client whose stream wasn't working. We're making this sacrifice so that we could make worship a little bit uh, more accessible to you. We don't want you to feel like you got to choose between God and your family. We recognize that some people will say, oh, you you baby feeding people or making it too convenient. But but we serve a Christ that met people where they were. He met the woman at the well where she was in her mess and he turned her into an evangelist. And we're meeting you where you are this summer. But when we meet you where we are, we need you to meet us too. So don't have me getting up early and ain't nobody on here. And so the purpose of this is so that you can, you know, get ready while you get ready to go to brunch or watch us. We don't want you watching service, you know, on Wednesday. We want to make sure that you get your word to start your week off. And so we're doing this for you. And we're starting this summer breeze with a prophetic word. God gave me a prophetic word um, on Tuesday and I sat on it. I forgot actually. And I was up as I am around 2 a.m., you know, praying for service on Saturday, early Sunday morning. And God was like, I don't want you to preach what you plan to preach. I want you uh, to prophesy. And uh, he took me back to the passage that I read. So I want us to look at it together. It's a random passage. Uh, I don't know um, how I ended up there, but but we're there. Um, and, um, as we go there, this is, is, this is interrupting me, um, my spirit, but God was showing me that as you, I didn't pull up the scripture, but I, but I want you guys to, to, I want to share something with you. A lot of you, um, this has nothing to do with what God had me say, but I looked down and, and God reminded me to share this. A lot of you are struggling with anxiety. This is not in my notes, but, but I want to free you today before we even get to the scripture to get the help that you need. 
we have been locked up right in our homes and so now as we go back into the community and we're around people and they're talking about the delta variant how it's more deadly and more contagious you get nervous the sight of your mask makes you nervous the sight of strangers makes you nervous your hearts are racing and i want you to know that is a natural physiological response to surviving or living through a pandemic because we haven't survived it yet and i want you to get some help go to your doctor ask for some anxiety meds go to your doctor um ask them you know to check your heart rate make sure your heart's strong these things are really helpful um i don't know if you can see it I'm trying to see um but these is called suja it's a relaxed shot that i get at kroger it has chamomile and valerian root in it I used to be extremely anxious before service was started. I could feel my heart racing. So I started taking one of these before service. Um, 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 what's the other company of the, the gummies that I eat? Oh, God. Um, there are some relaxed gummies. Let me look at my text messages because I sent it to one of my members. This is not what I plan to share with you. But the Lord was really heavy on me like, no, you need to deal with this now. Um, so these gummies right here, I don't know if you can see them. Goodbye stress. Is it going to focus? Goodbye stress. They sell them in Target. It's not Goji, um, but it's called Goodbye Stress. They sell them in Target. They sell them in Whole Foods. You can take those. There's also Tulsi Tea. T -U um, yes, it's by Ollie Joy. Um, and it says Goodbye Stress on the front. Um, Tulsi Tea. T U L S I. You can get it at Whole Foods. It's a tea that will help calm you. And if all else fails, tell them to put you on some anxiety meds. There is no shame, right, in taking medication. Um, and so I want to make sure that you guys are taking care of yourselves. We have lived through the unthinkable. Some of you are carrying grief. You're carrying weight. There is no shame, right? I've been trying to free people of this before I even passed it. If there was something wrong with your stomach, you'd go and you'd take some Pepto-Bismol. Your brain is reacting to the stress. Take something to calm your brain down. It's okay. I don't want you living in fear. I don't want you stressed out. Uh, I want you to take something, right? Do what is going to make you feel better. Um, there's nothing wrong with battling anxiety. Some of you had anxiety before the pandemic, and it has worsened. And I want you to do what's best for you. There's no shame. And taking a prescription, there's no shame. And taking a natural remedy, there's no shame. And doing that plus prayer, right? You need therapy, right? And you need prayer. You need therapy, you might need some medicine. You need therapy, you might need, right, a, a, a natural remedy. But whatever you do, take care of yourself in this season. It would be such a waste for God to keep you through this pandemic, to give you the visions and the dreams that he's given you, and you not be able to make that, right? You would not be able to make those things happen because anxiety stopped you at the door, right? Fear stopped you at the door. Um, and I want to liberate you, right? Do do what you got to do, right? I, I, God was like, no, nah, tell them. It was something that I battled with. It was a serious, serious, serious issue. And it wasn't that I was afraid to take anything. I didn't even realize that there were things available. And I was like, oh, the, the sight of a mask made me anxious because you guys know that I stayed in the house, right? I stayed in the house um, the whole time. I didn't go anywhere for a while because of my daughter, you know, protecting my daughter. So I would have everything delivered. So once I got vaccinated is when the anxiety peaked for me because then I was leaving the house and my mask would just make me almost feel claustrophobic. And I was like, y'all need to do something, right? And I started talking to my friends, right? And I found some solutions. And so if that is you, make an appointment with your doctor. Get your heart checked out. You know, talk to them about, you know, maybe pursuing some medicine if it's very severe. If not, start with some natural remedies. Or maybe you do natural remedies and a prescription. But we are a pro-therapy, pro-science church. God works with science. He is science. He's the creator of science. And he is not intimidated by you getting a prescription. The reason why there were no prescriptions in the Bible days is because there were no hospitals, right? Science had not even evolved to that point yet and that's why he was laying hands on people and uh, you know putting salve on people because there was no other science he was the innovator in that day but science began to evolve when he dis when he ascended right because we needed it and so i just want you guys um i want you guys to be free but let's look at uh haggai 2 and 19 haggai 2 and 19 the most random scripture ever i just i get up and i do my devotions every morning and this happened to be I believe what I read on Tuesday, 
and and part of it really really stuck out to me it really stuck out to me um in a way that i want to share with you and normally i don't just pluck out a scripture because we believe in contextual preaching here but but god gave me permission to 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 speak this word over you um to speak this word over you and so what god began to show me um was uh hold on y'all i'm trying to i got my ipad sitting up here this, I, it's almost like a red book sunday but i wrote it in my um my prayer journal. Shout out to my best friend, Crystal Sykes Williams. You should look up her Soul Reap Prayer Journal. Um, I'm using it today. Um, it has all of my sermon notes in it. You can't see it. You kind of can see it. But it's really cool. And I, I take my notes in that. Um, but go with me to um, Haggai 2 and 19. But I only want us to read that last sentence. Well, no, let's, let's read the whole thing. Is the sea still in the barn? As to the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, the olive tree, they have not produced. Yet from this day on, I will bless you in the harvest of your crops. And I want that last sentence to minister to you. I want it to minister to you. I want you to think about it. I want it to soak in your soak in your spirit. I don't know why my, my graphics are so large today. We're going to pray uh, that they that they act right because this is ugly. And I wasn't trying to do that. Uh, but I want this to... Soaking your spirit. Let from this yet from this day on, I will bless you. Just just let that, as the old saints say, let that minister to you. That uh today is the day that things will begin to shift for you. Today is the day um that things begin to take a turn for you. Today is the day that you close the chapter, that you close the door. I want you to say that out loud. I want you to type it in Twitter. I want you to put it in the comments. I want you to text it to your friends. Yet from this day on. I will bless you yet from this day on. I will bless you yet from this day on. I will bless you. I don't care what you did last night yet from this day on. I will bless you. I don't care what happened to you last year yet from this day on. I will bless you. I don't care what somebody said to you this morning yet from this day on. I will bless you. I don't care who left you yet from this day on. I will bless you. I don't care who you had to leave because it was toxic and dangerous yet from this day on. I will bless you. I don't care what happened on your job yet from this day on. I will bless you. I don't care what the doctor said to you Gigi yet from this day on I will bless you I don't care how many people you lost and it made you depressed yet from this day on I will bless you I don't care what you have in the bank yet from this day on I will bless you I don't care what you have spoken over yourself and it was against the will of God and you have lived a life of self-defeating and self-deprecating language spoken to yourself you are the reason that you're not prospering because you have allowed the words that you have spoken over yourself to cause you to find obstacle after obstacle because you don't believe in you the way that God believes in you but yet from this day on, I will bless you. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The Lord was with us because we just hit 91 people. We haven't hit 91 people during a stream in about four weeks because the Holy Spirit told me if you raise service back up, your people will come back. Yet from this day on, I will bless you. A, a door is a, a, a change is happening. Right. Right. And listen to Bree. She said, don't forget to share this stream. And this is what the Lord told me. He said, and, and this is before I even get to the prophetic stuff that God gave me. He said that you are about to close doors that you could not shut before. Right? For those of you who have never experienced a prophetic Sunday, it ain't no rhyme or reason. It's literally what God told me, and I'm going to share it with you. You take it how you want to take it. He said you are about to close doors that you were not able to shut before. I'll tell you, he just gave me this while Elisha was singing. I get up uh, while Elisha's singing, and I walk around, and I pray. And Harper was being really loud in the other room. My office door, which is immediately this direction, is, is actually my left, but it looks like to my right. Um, but there's a door. This is an old house in Midtown. Y'all know I love old houses. I got crystal doorknobs, old doors. It's an old house, but I love it. I love old houses, right? Well, my door um, in my office has never shut. I've been in this house, you know, almost two years. That door has never shut. You can, you can get it up close. But the house is old and it is shifted and that door will not shut. I don't know what happened, y'all, but that door shut today. I pushed it a little bit harder and it shut. Well, I heard her again and I opened the door. And then I came back and I was like, oh, my God, you just shut this door. I didn't even realize that I had shut the door the first time. And, y'all, I shut it again. 
And what God, he told me to go update your notes and tell people that you are about to shut doors you have never been able to shut before. Some of you have been struggling, right, with relationships, with fear, with doubt, and you haven't been able to close the door. There's things you need to let go and walk away from. You haven't been able to close the door. You've been afraid of what the other side looks like. You don't want to be alone. You don't want to be separated from your friends or your family. You don't want to lose that job because you're afraid that your business might not work. You are about to walk away from some stuff that you had not been able to walk away from before. God is giving you the authority now, the power, and the strategy to shut doors that you have never shut before. And here's this. You won't even realize you've shut it until the door is closed. Right? You're about to shut some doors. And so when I go back to um, Haggai 2 and 19, right? Haggai 2 and 19, he says, right? He says, he says, he says, uh, yet from this day on, I will bless you in the harvest of your crops. That's what the Amplified Version said. And God began to show me, because if you go back, he says, is the seed still in the barn? As to the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree, they have not produced. This is for those of you, right? And for some of you, this word hit a few weeks ago. This is just confirmation. But there are some of you that have planted. You have planted but you have not seen anything produced and it is frustrating because you plant it and nothing is growing. And God is telling you in this season, from this day on, I will bless you and what you planted, right, will harvest. So if you ain't plant nothing in the pandemic, this ain't your word. If you didn't move on what God said, this ain't your word. But for those of you that made moves toward what God says, for those of you that wrote the book, started the conference, opened the business, got the job, tried to date again, closed the door and walked away from what was wrong. For those of you that made a decisive decision to do something in the pandemic, despite the depression, despite the anxiety, despite the fear, whatever you planted, God says from this day forward, I will bless it. Right? I will bless it. And God began to break down the areas that he's going to specifically bless. And I'm going to be out of your way. He said he's blessing us in the areas of relationships and marriage. And so for those of you that are single, get ready. For those of you that are married and struggling, get ready. For those of you that are dating and thinking about marriage, get ready. God says he is blessing you from this day forward in the area of relationships. Be discerning, right? Be discerning. But he's blessing you. He said in the area of finances, in the area of finances, he is about to bless us. That does not mean that more may come in. It could mean that less goes out. I'm going to say that again. It doesn't mean that more is necessarily going to come in. He could bless you in a way that less goes out. And you need to be discerning and pay attention to what God is doing concerning your finances so that you'll be careful to give him glory because glory is going to carry you, right? If you neglect to give God glory for what God is doing, it could stunt the progression of the glory on your life concerning that matter. The next thing God says he's going to bless in the area of businesses, right? He's going to bless in the area of businesses, right? And so for those of you that were afraid to start that business and you're still concerned now because of the Delta variant, let me tell you, God says, launch the business now. Do not delay, right? Now, don't start just to be starting. I know there's a lot of people say, oh, start and fix it later. Don't start no raggedy business in the pandemic. Get your branding together. Get your structure together. Get your products together. Get your business space together. Get your team together, right? But start now. Don't wait until 2022. There is a grace on you in the next 90 days. And it may stretch for six months to move according to what God says. Glory is carrying people, right? But God does things in order. So don't slap no Instagram page together up to date time out you starting a hairline and you ain't got no hair yet. Or you ain't tested the hair. And now people buying hair that's kink, kinking up, right? Amen? Everybody want a bundle business, but these bundles be crumbled. I got bars. The next thing that God says is he's going to bless you mentally. That goes back to what I was saying about the anxiety. A lot of you are going to be released from anxiety and depression in this season, but it will not be this wave your magic wand miraculous thing. It will be you doing the work that partners with what the Holy Spirit is doing. So if that is taking a natural remedy, do it. If that is getting your uh, doctor's appointment, do it. But God is saying in this season, right, 
I am going to bless you mentally. I'm going to give you clarity of thought. I'm going to give you creative strategy. I'm going to give you million dollar ideas. I'm going to bless you. Hey, hey. And this is how he's going to bless your finance by you following through on what he gave you mentally. A million dollars ain't going to appear in your bank. But he'll give you a million dollar idea. And if you match your idea with the discipline, then baby, the glory can carry you to the million. Right? He also says he's going to bless you physically. Right? Physically. This is important. For those of you that have been struggling to gain or lose weight, shout out to Dr. Fred. Thick neck gang. <laughs> he going to block me. <laughs> We, we went to brunch with some of our leaders yesterday. We ordered spinach dip and steaks and salmon covered and stuff. And Dr. Fred said, let me get a naked chicken breast, no sides. He said he couldn't even eat the broccoli because the water was going to mess up his diet. The water in the broccoli was going to mess up his diet. So Sharon said he's trying to be a bodybuilder. He's going to be team thick neck. Them, them, listen, we got some bodybuilders at our church. She was checking them. But I love bodybuilders. Hello, somebody. Well, actually, he ain't got that kind of neck anyways. But if I was a man, I'd be a bodybuilder anyways. Because I ain't, listen. I got bars, but I ain't got that many hands. And if I was if I was buff, I could do it. Shout out to John. If you do want to be a bodybuilder, we got one of the best at our church. But Fred ain't trying to be no bodybuilder. That's why she was checking him. He just eating naked chicken breast with no broccoli. Um, but God's going to bless you physically. So if you're trying to gain weight, <laughs> in the comments, <laughs> if you're trying to gain weight or lose weight, right, God is giving you grace in that season. If you're trying to get your blood pressure and your cholesterol down, God is giving you grace in that season. If you're trying to kick diabetes, God is giving you grace in this season, right? There are things that God wants to do for you physically that he's going to give you the grace to do, right? Get on that treadmill. Go walk. Do some Zumba. But God is giving you the grace to do it in this season. Um, finally, he says that he's going to bless you socially, right? And then I'm going to pause before this next one. He's going to bless you socially. He's going to increase your networks, right? He's going to increase your networks and he's going to increase your um, connections, right? He's going to increase your networks and he's going to increase your connections, right? In this season. You're going to meet people who are going to change the trajectory of your life. You're going to meet people who are going to challenge you and stretch you and take you to places you didn't think that you would go. You're going to meet people. Your name, right, will be on the same roster as people that you never thought you'd be on. People will sponsor your ideas that you never thought you'd have access to. You're going to work and collaborate with people who you think are in other tiers than you because God is going to show you in this season that you are a one of one. And you deserve to be in every place that I'm about to introduce you to. God is going to send you new, new, new connections, right? New connections. But there's one more thing, and it's going to be all big and ugly again, that God showed me. And I want to remind you, if you're just tuning in, right? I want to remind you, if you're just tuning in, this is our prophetic Sunday. And God is speaking to us from Haggai 2 and 19. In that passage, uh, the, the prophetic word, is that God will bless us from this day forward. He will bless the crops and the harvest. And what it says to us today is we're taking that, we're holding on to that scripture that God will continue to bless us because we believe that this is a day that everything changes, right? This is a day that everything changes. The final thing that God gave me, and I shared a little bit about this with our team tomorrow, and I won't go into details because the enemy also told me that this, this, this thing that God gave me it's going to change the financial trajectory of our church. Business is going to take our members into another um, another tax bracket. And he told me not to say it live. So if you are interested in what I'm about to say, you need to email page admin at wemakewells.org. And I will set up a meeting um, with you. But God said he's about to shift us into property and land acquisition. Some of you are about to become homeowners and nobody in your family own homes. Some of you are about to buy land. Nobody in your family own land. This is the most important thing. God said he's about to bless you in the form 
of property and land acquisition. Get that in your spirit. If you're living in an apartment, you ain't going to be living in an apartment very long. If you're living in a duplex, you're not going to be living in a duplex very long. If you're renting your business space, you won't be renting your business space very long. Hear me clearly. God said he's going to bless the well maker. So this might not be a global word, but for the people that are called to this voice, God said he's going to bless us in the form of property and land acquisition. Email admin at wemakewells.org, right? And and here's the thing. God said this very clearly. He said that the curse of Naboth is being reversed. Let me help you. Naboth was the man that owned the vineyard that Jezebel stole, right? She had people fast and pray to take this man's land and God says he's flipping it and so there is there, what was taken from your forefathers she took his vineyard now remember Haggai 2 and 19 is that God's gonna bless your crops right Haggai 2 and 19 is about crops and this morning I heard Naboth and I'm like Naboth 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 that's Jezebel right God says oh my god what's that girl name Adrian send this to um Chris the girl that just had the baby I just saw her face and God said that this is for her. What is her name? Your friend Chris that just had the baby. Uh, all things Chris on Instagram. Make sure that she sees this. The Lord just showed me her face and said this entire word is for her. Um, not just the land part, but the land part specifically. But Naboth is a man you'll find in, I think it's 2 Kings 21. He had a vineyard. Jezebel wanted it. Jezebel had people to fast and pray against this man and to stone him to death. And they took this man's land and they killed him. God told me this morning, and I don't even know that Chris lady. I mean, we see each other, but God said, this is for her. Tell her I said it in the middle of the sermon. God showed me her face and said, this is for her. But, but God said he is flipping he is flipping the curse of Naboth. What was stolen from your forefathers, what your forefathers died trying to protect, will now be released back unto you. Some, some of you don't have access to your inheritance because it was held up by the enemy. Because the enemy did unscrupulous things, right? To take things from your family. God says he is releasing your inheritance. What they forfeited. What was taken. What was stolen. Is coming back to you. Some of you are going to get checks in the mail. Some of you are going to find that deeds still have your name on it. There is land with your name on it. There are buildings with your name on it. And even if it's in somebody's name. You go to those places and you claim it. Right by the blood of Jesus. I don't care if you got to ride by the property. And keep praying until it's released. Drive by the property. And keep praying until it's released. Pull it up. Up on Google Maps and look at it every morning. God is releasing property and land to us in this season. The final thing, right? That God showed me. Uh, because Tam say she don't trust the prophet if they tell you all good stuff. And she's right. Uh, and this might not be for the people that's on this call, the 99 of you. I'm telling y'all I hear God. We have not been able to engage our normal. We would normally have a hundred or more people on the stream. Soon as y'all start getting vaccinated, my numbers dip. Some Sundays, I'd be like, it's 33 people on here, Lord. What is happening? But I heard God say, just shift it up, and it worked. Um, but this is the last part. And I hate to end on a low note, but this because some of y'all need to, some of y'all might need to skip brunch. Some of y'all might need to skip, skip brunch and get on your face. Because this is what God said to close with. He said, there are some of you who you lost people to the pandemic. You know people that died. But God kept you. Some of you got COVID and nobody knew. And God kept you. Some of you, your business should have tanked. But God kept you. Some of you, your marriages could have been destroyed. But God kept you. Some of you, God allowed you to make it through this pandemic. You survived the pandemic. But you are not giving God his just due. Now that the world is open, you have abandoned God. Now that the world is open, you don't stop giving because you want to prioritize your trips. And God says there is suffering coming for the people that he spared in this pandemic. Who will not give him his just due. Right? There are some of you that need to be tithing. You have not. God says this is your warning. There are some of you that need to be giving more in your offering. You have not. God says this is your warning. And you know this. I don't even preach about that. We don't even preach that you're cursed if you don't tithe. We liberate people to give $3 if you can. But God says this is the word of the Lord. Suffering is coming. There are going to be some people that's going to lose businesses in this season that God kept because you did not tithe when you should have. Some of your businesses are struggling now. Quiet is kept because you were supposed to be tithing and you didn't. There are going to be some people that lose relationships and connections because they are not prioritizing worship. They haven't streamed in months. 
or they barely stream. They're not inviting people. Anymore. I'm telling you, God says, I kept you through COVID. The least you can do is keep your commitment to me. Right? There are people that should be serving their churches because some of you ain't well makers. So this might be for other churches. There are some people that are serving. They should be serving at other churches. Your gifts, right? God kept you and let your gifts flourish in the pandemic, but you didn't turn around and give them back to the church. And there are some people that took from the church, took everything the church could give, and they, ain't came, they, they haven't engaged the church since they got it. God says, I'm coming for you. So tell your friends, you can't hide your kids and hide your wife. But God is coming because he kept you and the pandemic is not over. So I will be careful. I will be very careful in this season about how I prioritize God in the pandemic that's about to come back full circle. I didn't want to end here, but this is what God says. So the word of God again, right? Before we, before we open up the doors of the church. Is that from this day on he will bless you? But that word, that word is for the that word, right? It comes with you gotta contextualize it. Cause he can't bless you if you ain't in the place to be blessed. From this day on, I will bless you. But there's some people that's gonna miss this prophetic word. So that's why you need to text all your friends and make sure that they got it. Right? So they don't miss this word. From this day on, he will bless us. But are we in position to receive the blessing? Are we closing the doors that need to be closed? Are we giving what we need to give? Are we serving the way we need to serve? Are we streaming the way we need to stream? Because God says, I'll make, I'll, I'll, I'll make some adjustments, but you need to make some adjustments too. Right? I'll make some adjustments, but you need to make some adjustments too. Right? I want to release land to you. I want to release relationships to you. I want to release finances to you. Right? I want to bless you mentally and physically, but you have got to be in position. And hear me clearly. What you forfeited. By your own unfaithfulness, God is about to close the door on that too. Because if you go back and you read the context of Haggai 2, he was talking about their unfaithfulness and their sin, but he still promises to bless them. So if that's you today, and you haven't been giving the way you're supposed to give, you haven't been streaming the way you're supposed to stream, you haven't been serving the way you're supposed to serve, that is still for you. You take with it what you can take with it. You do with it what you can do with it. But if you remain faithful, that blessing is still yours. It does not have to be suffering. It does not have to be struggle. It does not have to be lost. If you stay faithful, the glory will the glory will carry you. Right? The glory will carry you. So if you fell off, it's time to get back on. Right? If you've been on, it's time to go harder. Because God is doing something in the next 90 days to possibly six months. And it will bless your relationships, your marriages, your finances, your businesses. Bless you mentally and physically. Bless you socially and in terms of property and land acquisition. But you have to be in position. I'm telling you, if you're new to this, I don't preach that type of hell and brimstone stuff. I don't talk about, oh, if you don't do this, you're going to go to hell. We don't beat people over the head about what they can give. We're not that church. We actually give more, right, than we receive sometimes, a lot of times, right? But God gave me that word today because there are some people that are supposed to be given that have not. And God, God, God got me because he said, I recently got a, a blessing that I wasn't expecting. And I was trying not to tithe on. I was like, I ain't going to tithe on this. This was a gift. And God says, I sent that to you so that your 10% can be used in your church to bless somebody. And that's the word for somebody else, right? As we open up the doors of my father's house. God may have blessed your business or gave you those sales or gave you that promotion or gave you that job because he wants that 10% to be used in the house of the Lord so that we can do more. We may have been able to buy a building cash by now if everybody that was assigned to me was tithing. That's the truth of the matter. We're fine. We've, we've given away almost $100,000 to people in need. This is not about, oh, Pastor needs something. This is a person that refused a salary, right? That worked 25 jobs so that we could give away $75,000 in our first two years. So this ain't about money. If you're new here, don't be like, oh, she, no. My members know me. I refuse a salary, right? I was paying people and not being paid. Blessing people, right? And working. So that ain't what this is about. This is about what God is saying in this season. And so if you know you need to join, you've been, you've been, you've been eating off our, our tree, but you ain't been sewing back or you ain't been participating or you're not officially covered, you can join today by emailing admin at wemakewells.org. That was so abrupt. We need to pray. Shall I, I got I got ahead of myself. Let's pray. God, we thank you. We give you glory and honor for this day. We thank you for those who have gathered. God, those 
who have sown, those who are preparing to sow, those who have joined, those who are preparing to join. We thank you for the increase in the overflow. We thank you for what happens when we are obedient. God, I was obedient in shifting the time, right? And we see, God, the increase. And so we give you glory and honor for what you're doing, God, in this day. We give you glory and honor for how you're going to bless us and keep us. We ask that you touch the hearts of your people. Those who might feel guilty, lift the shame and the guilt. God, you do not come to condemn. God, you come to challenge us and to grow us. And so we thank you for the growth that is happening now. God, bless us and keep us and continue to let your word be true, God, over the next 90 days to six months that you would bless us in all of those areas and give us the ability, God, to walk in the fullness of your grace and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The doors of my father's house are open. If you would like to join a church that's going to be invested in your future and your destiny, we want you to email us at admin at wemakewealth.org or if you want to come down the digital aisle, right? We call it the digital aisle because we're not in the building yet. We have a building, a beautiful building, a whole lot of acres. But for me to protect you guys, uh, we don't, we got, we got, how many is it, Sharice, like 12 acres of land? Uh, and we ain't been in that building in over a year. But I'm about to start filming in the building because I feel like that's going to encourage people to watch too, to see me back on stage. I just got to lose like seven more pounds. <laughs> But if you want to join us, type in the comments, I want to be a well maker and we will welcome you with open arms. As I said, we are a church that gives. We bought Instacart memberships for all of our members at the beginning of the pandemic to keep them home. We sent blue light blocking lenses to all of our members to make sure that they were protecting their eyes as they stream, work, worship and school. We have bought a new heating system for members. We've sent a car to someone who needed it. We've done so much. We've replaced HVAC system for a whole sex trafficking uh, company. We've sent truckloads of toys uh, to kids whose mothers were escaping domestic violence. We provided, um, we provided bedding and toiletries for an entire apartment complex, a hundred apartments of women who are escaping domestic violence. We are a church that gives, and I mean, I have not even, I've not even scratched the surface of all that we've done in two years. We give, we bless businesses. We are a church that gives. So if you want to be a well maker. Type in the comments, I want to be a well maker. What does it mean we make wells? We are founded on John 4, right? Which is the woman at the well. She leaves that well and becomes a well because she pours out the gospel into her community. We make people who pour out the gospel and pour out their purpose into the community. Our discipleship model is thirsting, drinking, pouring, and well making. We believe you come in thirsting just like she did at the well. You began to drink the word of God through worship. Then you began to pour out in your small groups in the world or as a leader. And then finally you become a well maker. That's when you bring people back to the church to join or to be baptized. And we've seen that happen. We've seen Cookie make wells. We've seen Rashada make wells. And find the final stage of well making is church planting. Some of you are going to plant churches, right? That's our discipleship model. So if you want to be a well maker, um, type I want to be a well maker, or you can email um, admin at we make wells to join us. It's also giving time and I'm going to be out of your way. Look at God, it's 50 minutes. Somebody give Pastor a hand clap. 50 minutes. This ain't never happened. And we got a good word. If you want to give today, give um, at paypal.me slash we make wells or to our cash app at dollar sign we make wells. I keep forgetting to make the graphic for our giving app. I'll try my best to have that next week. But we do have an app where you can give on that app as well. Uh, but if you want to give today, give to us at paypal.me slash we make wells or our cash app dollar sign we make wells. Remember that if you don't get paid until the first, you can still tithe when you get short tithes. Tithing is 10% of what you've earned, right? So if you earn $100, that's just $10. If you earn $10, that's just $1. And we're not a church that tells you you're going to hell if you don't tithe. We don't see that in the Bible. What we see is that the curse was broken at the cross, but the benefits still remain, right? I talked to Bishop for weeks about it because I was nervous to say that because I grew up in churches that said that it was, you know, you're cursed if you don't tithe. And then I worked, you know, I collaborated with churches where they said that tithing wasn't even biblical anymore. I don't believe that. I believe that tithing is biblical. I just believe that we're no longer cursed. And so if you can't tithe, right, it's okay. Give the greatest gift that you can give, right? But if you can tithe, you give your 10%, right? You give your 10% because there's promises attached to it that did not go away at the cross. It says that man would give unto your bosom, that your cups would overflow, that you'd be able to rebuke the enemy, that he'd pour you out a window of blessings, that you wouldn't have room enough to receive it. You don't want to miss those things. So if you have the ability to tie, you're actually hurting yourself if you don't tie, right? You're hurting yourself if you don't tithe. And so if that's you today, you have the ability to tithe, we encourage you to do it because it is through your tithes and offers that we're able to bless people. And we're about to bless a lot of people during Summer Breeze as we prepare to open our churches, our church back up again. 
So if you want to give today, give to our PayPal. That's paypal.me slash we make wells or to our cash app, which is dollar sign we make wells. Well, listen, y'all. I love y'all. I'm grateful. We finishing up at 52 minutes. God has done it. We listened to him. He knocked it out the park with the numbers. We give him glory and honor. I hope that you guys save this word, share this word. Listen to that part every day for the next 90 days. Remind yourself of what God has promised you on this day. Because as I end, so that you have this graphic, you know, in your mind, I'm I'm a I'ma put it up on the screen the right way. And you screenshot this so that it make it make it your screensaver in your phone, right? So that you have it. Don't don't forget what God said to you on this day. He said, yet from this day on, I will bless you. Yet from this day on, I will bless you. Yet from this day on, I will bless you. I love you guys. I'm praying for you. Continue to pray for me and my families. I pray for you and yours. And as always, you and your families be blessed.